Hi everyone, Frank here. We're taking you for a tour of the Yankee Boy Mine today. So this is the main hall uh, level tour. So this is the tour we started last year. So you know, basically it's just, if you can walk like a, a half a mile or so on a level, uh, in, a, in a level place, you can uh, make it in here and back out. We had people in their 90s that went in here, kids, whatever. So we have two tours. We have this tour and we have an advanced tour. Now an advanced tour, uh, we're going to show that to you next week. You'll see it next week, but it's a more complicated tour. Um, you know, we don't want to have any kids under 12 and you'd have to be in good shape and you'd have to go up ladders and all that but this is a simple basic tour that pretty much anyone can go on so um yeah we're uh, we're going to take you for a little uh, tour into the mine here and um you know we hope to see you here you know and the reason we're doing this is obviously not all you people are are, uh, are able to come out here and have a, a look at the mine here so we'd like to share it with you uh whether or not you're able to come and experience it for yourself so we'll grab the camera and we'll take you in Most of it's probably mental. You don't like dark places that are wet and uh, you're claustrophobic. You have a bunch of phobias and stuff, but it's not going to be the place for you. So we also have the museum here, but we're not going to go through that. Um, if you look back on our old videos and stuff, there's a there's a tour of the museum somewhere. And uh, we also have, there's also a, a VR tour of the mine where you can actually go in and, uh, and tour it. The link for that will be below. So um, on the door here is the first thing you'll see here. We've taken over 3,000 loads uh, out of this mine. Um, so we had to take all the muck out of here um, to get uh, as far as we could in the mine. This mine was mined by something called a shrinkage stope, so all the waste rock is, is over the bank there. We had to take over 3,000 loads out, uh, and we finally got it all cleared out. 2,208, I forget now, I thought it was 3,000. <laughs> all right, uh, so we uh, had to timber this whole mine up because it was all collapsed and rotten, and we also put a ditch in, uh, so it's fairly dry. Now we're just doing a little bit of work on the ditch to kind of clean it up for this year. Uh, over the winter a little bit of rock fell down. It doesn't normally fall very much, but you know, just the freeze and the thaw cycle causes a little bit of rock to come down into the mine. So this uh, pipe, you're wondering about this pipe, this is our drinking water. So we get our drinking water from there. When we get to the very back, you'll see a dam and uh, it collects the water for, for the, our house. This is a really cool little wall that Sharon built. This is a, something called gobbing, and when we're working on this, Sharon built it. Yeah, this is a mine, or uh, the mine plan of the whole of the mine. So if you look, and we're going to be going on the in just in the green level, which is the main hall level, all the way back to about here. So we can't get to the very back of the mine because you'll see it's still collapsed there. One day maybe we will. And you can see there's the other levels and manways going up to the other levels on the advanced tour. We can get up to this level. Uh, no, actually this level. The, the 2800 level is 200 feet from there to there and get out the top. We'll continue on here. So the, uh, the reason that sign says that is if you have a Granby style of car, it actually is a self-unloading car. We have um, a picture of one in the museum. And... Uh, the, the wheel sticks out the one side, so if you're standing on the other side, it'll catch you as you walk past. So, we'll show you our, our timbering and stuff from the back side. You've got to kind of watch your head a little bit because it's a little bit low here. And uh, this is just trying to keep a little bit of loose rock and stuff from coming off the top. And we had a little bit kind of came down the side. I just kind of cleaned it up here. It's fairly dry in here. Um, you know, there's usually like, I don't know, an inch or so of water or less. So, you know, some people have been come in here on the main hall level and flip-flops and, you know, your feet might get a little muddy, but it's all right. Um, uh, don't wear flip-flops if you're going on the advanced tour because it's uh, loose rock and you'll see next week. So, uh, normally we always take the right-hand branch, so that's what we'll do here, the right-hand rule, and we'll go back to that one on the way back. So, um, in the wintertime, we see bats in here all the time. Uh, they are hibernating in here, but they're... Uh, it's the middle of April now, so they're uh, they're active now. 
So they don't roost in the same place all the time. So uh, we haven't seen them for a little while. But they come out, they fly every night. So we, if we're sitting outside, we can see them coming out of the mine. Lately, we've seen them in the drill holes, but I don't think they're in there today. We'll have a look and see if we can find them. We have two kinds of bats here. There's a, a Townsend's long-eared bat and a Western small-footed bat. Those are two types I've seen in here. I haven't seen any others. Okay. Now, see these uh, markings on the wall? That's how many feet we're at 300. We're at 300 feet from the, from the surface. And we, uh, we'll put those in there so we can kind of keep track of where we are. Uh, so this is calcite here. You see it's, uh, um, it's calcium that's in the water, so it drips down here quite a bit, and there's a lot of minerals in the water. And we have that same, our water's, uh, we've had tests and it's good to drink and everything, but it has a lot of calcium in it, so we have water softener. So, uh, so over time, um, this, we try to get people not to touch these. They're quite fragile, and they'll break off, and they've taken 100 years or so to grow. So we don't want to have them broke off, because people they just can't seem to help touch them, but they're pretty cool, but they're fragile, so i would ask you to be respectful of that. Okay, so we'll take this first right-hand branch. Uh, this is a, uh, a pump, a couple of water pumps they use for, uh, for pumping out of the mines, and this, they run on compressed air. A little further up this drift here, we're at the 350 here. So here we have a uh, uh, a collection of, of uh, minerals that show up under a UV light. So I have a UV light. Uh, I didn't. I don't have it here. I got to charge it back up again. But it's really cool when you turn them on. You'll see the blue and the greens. There's fluorite, and then there's some silver and stuff in there, and some calcite. Calcite's really red color. So this is somewhere where they mined this out a little bit. There's a tiny little seam you see here. Uh, it's not very big, but all the gold and the quartz was in the in the or all the gold and silver was in this quartz. So this is where you see the seam here. And then you can see where they drilled up here. They were following the seam, but it's so thin that they just pinched out. They didn't bother going any further. It's kind of interesting. They did drill further in there, but they, were, they didn't blast it. So probably I'm thinking they drilled this, then the foreman come along and say, oh, that seam's pinched out. Let's not waste our time and go somewhere else. I'm thinking. All right, so this is something called a winds. And a winds is uh, just a place where they mine below the main hall level. But they had to bring the ore back up. So the water is just collected in here. Over the winter time, so we're at the 400 here on this branch. Over the winter time, the water actually went down quite a bit. There was only about half as much water in there. And uh, we don't take people over this little bridge in the tour, but we'll take you guys. Because um, we don't want people to go for a swim. Never had anyone fall off of here. And it wouldn't be good if I fell because I've got a $2,000 camera in my hand. <laughs> But there's nothing really on this side, other than that sign that came from the Jersey Emerald Mine, and it just pinches out about another 50 feet back there, and it ends. So the, the reason that sign is there is because um, if you're working in levels that are below ground and you have to pump and the water's coming in all the time, uh, as soon as the pump shuts off, the water comes up quickly and men can drown, so they have to be mindful of that. All right, well, uh, oh, one other thing I'll show you here. Hopefully uh, it won't be me swimming. In here, a little more complicated holding a camera, talking, and balancing at the same time. There's a little bit of a carbide rating here. All right, so let's go back to the next branch. All right, so we're back at the branch here, and this is where our ore car is, Tippy. So uh, we used it to haul uh, another 2,208 loads out of here. This is an 18 gauge track, which means it's 18 inches between the the two rails. That was a pretty common uh, gauge for the track. So we're coming into the, where the number one shaft is, and this is all wood that came from the number one shaft. That we saved some of it, and some copper wire and stuff that was in here. If we look here, there's a stick of dynamite that was left over from when they mined here that didn't get set off. And you can see quite a few drill holes up in here. And uh, the drill holes up here is where I've seen the bats quite a few times. There's a couple bats every night they used to roost in there, but they found another place. I didn't look today. They might be back in there. We'll have a look, but oh, they are too. There's one. You see them up there? 
There's about, and there's the other one in that one. But they weren't there yesterday. I haven't seen them for a few days. So they have some other places that they roost sometimes. This is uh, some signs that came out of the HB mine. And it's a, it's a standard kind of a thing for the, uh, if you have a, a skip or a hoist, the, the signals uh, that they use for bells to uh, control it, because they didn't have radios back then. So this is the 400. This is the number one shaft. And um, when we first started here, uh, this is as far as you can get. This was plugged. So I think we took about 400 ore cart loads out of here to clean it up. And this is a three compartment shaft. So it had, um, there's, there's an ore bin that we rebuilt on this side. It had a, an ore bin that was quite similar, but didn't have a narrow chute gate. So we built this, so it doesn't look really old, but actually it's only uh, about a year old. It's just gotten gray from the water. So there would have been a solid wall that goes, there we go. There would have been a solid wall that goes all the way up to there, and then there was a level right at the end of that row there. Right there, there was a level right there. That's about 50 feet up. There's another level, 100 feet up. You can see that water pipe way at the top there. And then, if you go to the very right, it continues up there. You can't see it. It goes up the steep bank on the goes to the top of the mine. There's another uh, ore passway out there. So there would have been uh, two chutes, one on that side and one on this side. So there would have been another ore, sh ore gate uh, or chute down here. And the middle part would have been a manway. So that's where the men walked up to the top there. We put a couple boards in here so it keep your feet dry. And the calcite is really hard here. So we have a hard time keeping this dry, chipping it out. We had to chip all this out so we could um, use that ore car here so it doesn't derail. This is a little uh, display area that has explosives and stuff in it. And, uh, well, there's no explosives in it, but uh, it uh, talks about explosives. So, this is uh, um, where they store the explosives in this uh, chest here and uh, the drills and stuff in there. So, I'll explain to you a little bit about some of the drills. Um, this is uh, a drill that goes straight up and down is called a stoper. See it's got a drill on it and it goes straight up and down. And this other one is called a jack leg. Now they're all both kind of similar. They have um, a water and an air fitting. That's for the water and the bigger one's for the air. And this one has the same thing also. And the reason is because um, if you look at the drill bits, they're uh, hollow on the on the very they have a hollow tube going through here so the water goes through there and it cools the air bit. The air drills so what happens when you're drilling the water's coming out of the hole and it's flushing the little pieces of, uh, of rock in there. So the other th reason they do that is because first of all it cools the bits so they last keep sharp a lot longer but it also controls the dust. So this type of mine has a lot of silica in it. Uh, quartz is mostly silica and if you uh, breathe that in, it's very dusty. You get something called silicosis in your lungs, and uh, it'll kill you. You get miner's lung from that. That is actually a sign from antioxidants. About the powder room in there. So um, the w this is where they would have drilled the, the, that a heading here, but then they just stopped there and didn't go any further than here. So. All right, we'll continue on up the drift. This is very hard. You had a real hard time breaking all this calcite. So what happens is you get the calcium in the water and it builds up a hard deposit and uh, builds up over time and it dams the water up. There's an old oil can from the 1950s called Esso Marble Lube. So here's a little station that we explain about uh, diamond drilling. So this is a diamond drill here and what it does is you drill a, a hole, a core through the rock just like this goes right out through there and these holes here are from that. So the reason they did that is because they want to do samples. They think uh, because there was a vein here, if you see this vein along here, it runs along like that and it's not quartz but it's very close to quartz and it could possibly have gold or silver in it. So they drilled a whole bunch of holes in this row all the way along here to test that, to see if it breaks into some other minerals or gold or whatever. And um, that's how diamond drilling works. So rather than having to drill a tunnel into that area to test the, 
the, um, the ore, the rock, they could just uh, drill, diamond drill holes like that. So if you look there, that steel line is the original air compressor line that was in the mine. The white line is our, uh, our water line. So the reason we have that going all the way to the back and dammed up there is when people are walking through here, they're not uh, making our, our water all muddy and keep it clean. And the drinking water, like I say, it's been tested and it has uh, no issues whatsoever. It's nice, clean water, just a little hard. So here's a little station here that we have. I think we're about 650 back here. And um, so we had to work here for well, almost a year to get past here. We had, uh, um, I don't know, I think there was almost 2,000 loads of ore that came out of this area. Uh, there's a couple ore chute gates and then there's a whole bunch of carbide writing here. Um, so it says uh, Big Martin, Freud, um, Colin, Art, John and a Jack I think all together. So it's kind of the tradition of the miners used to write their names and the stations that they were working and stuff. Um, you see a golf ball. So what we did is when this was plugged, there was holes opening up in the very top and we'd throw a golf ball down and we wanted to know when we would see the golf ball. Sometimes it was hundreds of loads later, so we knew we had quite a bit to go yet. <laughs> so now that's something that they use those plugs. We put that in there. But that's the way that you can attach, say, a line, an electrical line or something along the ribs. So this is the bypass that we built to get past this section. So we had to completely block this off. There was an ore chute here, but it, this shaft goes straight up and there's huge boulders and a whole bunch of loose stuff up there. So um, we had to build up this bypass to get underneath it to keep it safe for everyone. And then after that, we dropped about 50 feet of muck on top of it. So it's got loose material um, all the way back up to the to a level about 50 feet higher than us. So um, so it's very safe in that there's no big rocks or anything that could fall down here. And you can see that that one stall, that rock was all loose and stuff. So we had to put these big stalls in here to wedge it in there to hold it up. So they're holding it all up there. So it's all safe underneath there. And in the event that something did happen that got collapsed, you wouldn't be trapped in the mine because there's an escape. Um, to get up to other levels. So um, on you were standing here and you think, oh, you're just walking along the track here. But this is actually a winds underneath us. So if you look there and you look down here and you see it's all hollow underneath there. You can't really look in there too much, but I can turn the light on and you can see anything in there. But so there was a vein up here and they mined it all the way down. And so this is just a bridge that goes over top of it. So it's actually a false floor. This is just a bridge, it's not really the floor. So, uh, you know, it's always a risk in exploring a band of mines that you would fall through a false floor and you wouldn't know it. In this case, if you fell through, you'd just get wet, it wouldn't be bad. But imagine if you were hundreds of feet up and you fell through a false floor, uh, you know, some of you guys could probably swim, I don't think any of you can fly. So, um, falling in the water is not so bad, falling in the, through the air, not so good. So we see lots of stuff all the way along here, drill bits, these are a, there's a hand steel from when they were, they were mining here, tin cans, uh, carbide writing, and here we are, we're seeing this vein here, along here that they followed, so it's getting a little bit more interesting as we get further back here, and here's something that they used to count the loads, those dots they put in there for every load that they got, they put a dot down there, it's a tally. Oh, this is a manway that we've constructed to get up to another level. So we haven't, uh, uh, we've named this one. This is called Erebus. We have two manways, one called Erebus, one called Terror, up in a higher level. And we've named them after um, the ships in the Franklin Expedition, if you know your history from Arctic exploration. So this is where we go on the advanced uh, expedition uh, tour, I guess. So we go up there and we go, uh, we climb a, two, a total of 200 feet to get up through uh, the big stopes and get up into the more interesting parts of the mine. But you have to climb 20 stories up. We're just going to continue along here. Look how smooth this wall here. So this is called the hanging wall and the foot wall. So this is the foot wall, the hanging wall is above it. Foot wall is below the deposit, hanging wall is above it. Uh, see lots of drill holes in here. There's calcite along here. 
And there's um, a plug here. Well, let's see, I'll show you some of the writing here. It's kind of cool. So this one here says, Beware of Falling Rock. And we'll share the camera what that says. And then it says, uh, There's some other writing, but I can't really see what it says. And it says, Watch Out Dangerous Rock. So these are uh, sulfides that you see along here. And that's what causes acid leaching in mines. So basically it's some um, volcanic activity. So what happens if the water comes in contact with sulfides, it makes the water acidic. And uh, if you go through limestone and stuff like that, it, um, it uh, dissolves things like calcium and all that, gives you hard water. But it also raises, raises the pH of the water. So when you hear the term acid leaching, you always think it's something, uh, some chemical they use in the mining, but it's just a natural part of opening up uh, sulfides and then water goes through and it, and it enters into it. So that plug there, we hammered that in there, the water was pouring out of there, and we're trying to keep the, the water level a little lower. And then, because uh, last year it was pouring out of there and then towards the end of the year it dried up. So we just put a plug in there and left it in there. So that says, uh, the hole says A9, 72 feet. So it goes in 72 feet, it's a diamond drilling hole. We've got a number of them around here, deeper ones. And you're seeing the deposit up there that they mine. Not great, but yeah, there's a vein that they were following there. I don't think anyone got rich off of that vein, but you can see some quartz in there. And this is why they put this drift in here, so the drift kind of goes back and forth from right to left following this vein. So they don't know as they get further back if it's going to pinch out, if it's going to get uh, richer or what. Uh, this is an old skull that was in here. It's pretty rotten, so they try to get people not to touch it, but it looks kind of cool. It looks like it's holding up this rock. I don't know if it is or not. We don't want to test it. There's another drill hole. So M14. This says it's 27 feet deep. And there's some wooden stuff that we lost found in here. There's quite a few artifacts that we found when we went back in here that we've left here. Like this old miner's ladder. You can see the, the rungs are wore from the miner's boots going up and down them. And there's just a few odds and ends along here, some wood that was left in here, some rail. This is a, we have a, a, about three different sizes of rail, that's the very smallest rail you'll see. So this is some ore that they left here, this is what they would have been mining, this quartz. For some reason they never picked it up, there was just a big pile of it, we threw it in here. And uh, here's a bunch of uh, airline water line that uh, they'd left uh, left here. It was actually laying in the middle of the track, but we, uh, we threw it in that little... So, um, typically they, they would use these, they might have been uh, wanting to follow this small little vein there, and then they just quit going here. But if they have muckers, they use those to store the cars, um, and then bring the, the cars up to the face, the empty cars. So this was also another false floor, as you can see, uh, there's boards in here. Um, they mined further up there. You can see the vein going up there. So there's likely water underneath here too because there's water pouring out through here. So it's probably hollow underneath this here. So and this is as far as the track went. The track never went any further than this. Well, it did at one time, but when we got back here, there wasn't any track further than here. So for the rest of it, what we were working in here, we had to um, wheelbarrow it out. And then we hit left our car here and then shoveled it into our car. Because you don't have any more track. So there you can see the vein. Looks kind of interesting. You can see the... Oh, there you go. That's their mining. You can see it all the way from there. All the way up there, pretty thin. Which is the reason I guess they quit mining here. And then if you look on this side... It just goes up to a little cubby hole there, some calcite there. So I think this is kind of the more interesting part of the mine. But So there's, um, we see some pyrite here, which is just fool's gold. And the quartz, this is what the gold, and the gold and the silver in a hard rock mine is normally, well the gold is normally microscopic, so you wouldn't know if there was any gold in there unless you crushed it up. Like a lot of people, they think, oh you can find gold nuggets in mines and stuff, but you can't. Not normally, anyhow. So the way they get the gold out, they would have to crush it up real fine. And then there's a number of processes they can use to get it out. Here they uh, shipped it all to the smelter. 
This is the first mine to ship uh, um, quartz to the to Granby smelter. Collection of, uh, of quartz that we've uh, picked up here and put aside. So they melted this rock down, and the gold being heavier, it went to the bottom, and then the waste rock floated to the top. There's some of you can see some silver and stuff in here. There's veins of silver. That grayer stuff is the silver ore. And uh, these are some uh, um, oil cans of stuff that we found in here. Somebody just played the side play a little joke, so they painted some rocks gold. <laughs> uh, so here we see the vein here. So along here they mined here. And you can still see the quartz along the bottom. Running along here and along the top as well. So here's a big slab of quartz that fell off of the side. So this whole, um, if you look at the whole side here, that would have had a big vein of quartz all the way along here. And that's what they mined. They took that quartz off and they uh, shipped that to the mill. All right, so now we're, uh, this is as far as we can get right now. So we just built a dam here. And this is where our drinking water comes from. So we try not to get people get past here. Uh, it's pretty scabby as you can see looking further up here, but we can show it to you. Yeah, see and they mined all the way up there. So there's a big stope going up there. And you see an old man where it's all rotted. Now we've been up there, uh, but so the tunnel would actually go further uh, at this level and goes around this corner to the right underneath that. But um, first of all, we would have to move that rock out of the way, and it's pretty unstable up there. So, and you can also see a vein of quartz there. So probably in, maybe in the future, in the future years, or whatever, we might uh, try to stabilize that and get further in there. Maybe build a, a um, some kind of a bridge or something to get under there. We'll see. That's another project for another day. So that's as far as our tour goes. We are going to um, turn around and head back. Uh, there's a bunch of other carbide writing in here. And we will show you that branch that we missed at the very, uh, at, the, at the 150 level. The, the branch going to the right. Alright, so we're back at the 150 level and we're going to show you that last branch to the right there. So this is our uh, werewolf skull that we have. <laughs> Actually, it's a black bear. And here again, they followed uh, another vein here. And, and there's a really good... Um, illustration of both the hanging wall and the foot wall. So the foot wall again is the bottom and then you can see the ore in here and then the hanging wall is above that. So the ore is between the hanging wall and the foot wall. In this case uh, there was probably nothing of any value in this ore or this vein, just a bunch of soft stuff and they just did a kind of exploratory tunnel to see if it turned into something else and it likely did not because uh, it doesn't go back any further than about 100 feet or so. But we had a nice big area in here and we built um, um, something called a square set. Uh, a model of a square set which he used way back when. And basically it was just used as a scaffold. If you look at this uh, post here, it's got a square peg in it. And then these other pieces fit into it. So that is called uh, the post, the cap and the girt. And they built these scaffolds uh, sometimes 50 or 100 feet high. They keep adding levels higher and higher. And what they did is they would build this uh, one section like this and they would get up on there, use it for a scaffold, mine as high as they could. And then they would keep adding more sections to go further and further up. So it's not that strong, it's just basically a scaffold. And then uh, lots of times they use rock to fill the bottom to make it more stable. They didn't use it much anymore. Now they use things like pillars and, and different methods of mining. It's an old method of mining that uh, was uh, started in the Constock load in Nevada is where they first started that. So there is a, an old drill, hand-operated drill. This is uh, um, a light that's operated off of compressed air. They used it at the very back where there was a mucker and they had compressed air. Um, there's a grinder there that uses uh, runs off of air. Here's some hangers and stuff they, uh, they got from the mines inside Phoenix for the electric railway. An old um, vice there. That is a call bell from a mine that we got from Goldfield, Nevada. It was a homemade uh, call bell to, uh, to call the hoist up to different levels. And um, there was a guy here, Mike, that would give us a hand here. And he always wanted to sleep in a mine, so he made a little bed and he slept in here. 
So if you like sleeping with rats with water dripping on your face, it's a nice, real nice place to have a little camp. Well, that is um, the special plaster of gold thing. It's a screen to uh, to shake out small material from rocks. And we just have a couple other tools and stuff that we uh, have on display back here. There's an old uh, grinding wheel. And these are um, to bend the track. When he when he goes around corners and the, that's how you bend the truck. Uh, that is uh, something they use to uh, tie up a boat in Antioch's and their blacksmith tools here. This is a forge and a forge blower, and uh, we have different all these different bricks from different places. That came from Antioch's. Has Granby on it. Yeah. So that is uh, all we can show you for the for the basic uh, tour, the uh, flat deck car and a little bit of uh, air tubing light in there. So uh, join us next week and we're going to go up uh, the Erebus uh, Manway and we're going to show you the top of the mine for the advanced tour. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us this week. We have a show every week so we'll see you next week. Uh, check out our new merch page. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Music is by the Addits.